So the, the changes I see for composite materials in space vehicles over the course of, in the near term, the next couple of years, will be uh, a concerted effort at trying to develop specification and requirement processes that aren't onerous, as onerous as they are now. Uh, we've learned some things through the Orion program over the course of the last five or six years and, and how those specifications are developed and then how they're implemented with industry. And, and to date, that's been a very expensive process. So to enable composites in these, ve in these vehicles in the, next, in the near term, we need to come up with processes to make that much more efficient. So the way, the way I see AeroDef fitting in, um, number one, uh, as, a, as a first time meeting, your exhibition floor was excellent. The, the vendors that were down there are a lot of the, the folks that are kind of behind the scenes for the large scale uh, gantry and fiber placement machines and things like that. But they're, they're the folks that end up supplying a lot of either the software or hardware for, for that effort. And, um, and that's where AeroDef, I think there's a direct connection between our industry and composite manufacturing and what's going on at this meeting. Well, there have been a lot of benefits to society from, from what NASA does. It really goes back to the very beginning of, of the creation of NASA in the direction from Congress. The Congress directed NASA to, to transfer NASA technology for, for broad societal benefit, really for the benefit of all mankind. So we've seen many of these uh, technology applications really in the fabric of our everyday life. Um, of course, there are many things from space in general, like uh, global positioning systems, which uh, we depend on every day, to many health things that have come directly from NASA. When we try to keep astronauts safe and healthy in the extreme environment of space, we have to monitor their systems, understand their health, and uh, many of these applications are in hospitals today and benefiting us uh, in our everyday lives. And there's so many things that, uh, that uh, really are ubiquitous that benefit from space technology, but uh, most people don't know about those. One of the great uh, uh, tools we put together to help understand that is NASA Home and City, and you can see that at www.nasa.gov city, and that'll help you understand some of these impacts. Well, small businesses have been a great source of innovation for us, and there's a program that NASA participates in, uh, along with other federal R&D agencies, the Small Business Innovation Research Program. And uh, each year, uh, we fund uh, uh, several hundred research projects with these small businesses, and they've come up with some really great innovations, uh, from impact detection sensors that are now on the leading edge of the shuttle wing, to a lot of technologies for the Mars Exploration Program, that are now on Mars in uh, rovers and landers. Uh, the technologies that have also found their way into other uh, commercial products uh, that, uh, that we use and that are generating jobs uh, in the economy uh, that had their origins uh, in NASA that have really come from the innovation of these small businesses. So they've been a tremendous partner for us, a great source of innovation, and, uh, and uh, NASA works with them to address our problems and also help them be successful in commercializing the technology that they developed for NASA. Yeah, well, it's been a, a great pleasure to be here at AeroDef, and I think it's a, it's a great forum to bring together folks who are uh, trying to understand what the, the real uh, trends are in manufacturing technology and looking at opportunities to uh, implement these new technologies into the things that we're trying to do uh, in NASA and, and in aerospace. So it's a great community to address those challenges.